I feel like I've ended the year strong and I want that momentum to carry me through the new year. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. With me, as always on these Wednesdays, we got Matt Jones. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Todd? I'm doing well. I can't stop laughing because before the show we were rapping, uh, we were just trying to figure out, you know, maybe a new, uh, how, how we introduce the show. So I thought I could just do a, a beatbox to introduce pillars of wealth creation. But yeah, you, well, I think you were we decided rapping, against yeah. it. <laughs> you, you weren't rapping. Right. I was, but yep. you know, I said when I was a kid in the shower, I used to beatbox all the time and I would rap and I thought I was like vanilla ice. Uh, but Apparently, I didn't turn out quite like Vanilla Ice, but that's okay because, you know, now I, I guess I'm buying multifamily properties and senior yeah. housing. Yeah, if multifamily doesn't okay. work out for you, you. You've got another option. Like I can plan. always fall back, right? It's, it's <laughs> you. You, you want to make sure you're building your wealth for the future, and then you go do what you. You can go do some of the stuff you love. And you have like that passion for that doesn't maybe make you as much money, which for me would probably be beatboxing um, probably wouldn't make me a ton of money. Maybe, you know, maybe i just have this hidden talent uh, that you all don't know about. And I probably do, you know, <laughs> it, it, it should, it should come out sometime. Well, maybe we'll have a rap battle sometime and see how that goes. Ooh, that could be good. We were at the the Minnesota State Fair and there was a beatboxer that came on and he was really good. And it it was actually really fun. And so then I took my beatboxing skills out and showed my kids uh, the beatboxing skills. And for some reason, they didn't like my beatboxing quite as much as the guy that was on stage. But, you know, I got to polish it up a little bit and, and we'll be good. Fair enough. All right, well, Matt. So what are we going to hit on today? Well, we got a couple of weeks left here in the 2021. And so we're going to be talking about how to wrap up your year strongly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so easy, I think, for us to get complacent this time of the year. You know, we just had Thanksgiving. We all had the turkey coma. Uh, we get lazy. We, we focus on, you know, maybe Christmas shopping or having you got family over, maybe you got trips planned or, or whatever it is. And uh, it just seems like this, it's the holiday season. And whether, you know, it's Christmas for you or it's a Hanukkah or it's whatever, but it, it just, there's so much going on at this time in the year. And the other thing is too, a lot of other people shut down, Matt. I mean, there's just not as many multifamily properties that are getting listed between Thanksgiving and quite frankly, and all the way into mid to end of January. Um, but, and there, and it just seems like people just go into this kind of hibernation time during the end of the year. So it's easy to get caught up in that. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Uh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you go, this is the time I'm going to take. Uh, so you got to decide that for yourself. But for me, I want to keep on pushing. I want to end the year strong and I want to start the year really strong as well. Why is that important? Uh, I just like to keep my momentum going. I, I agree. You need some time off. So maybe this is a time where you say, Hey, I want to refresh. It's a great time of the year because other people are kind of, you know, in their little hibernation phase. So, so that's what I want to do. But for me, I just want to keep on pushing. I want to end the year strong. I want to feel like I've ended the year strong and I want that momentum to carry me through the new year. Uh, so I don't get into a longer habit of um, hibernation, right? Of, of just kind of being lazy, I guess. Yeah, that's fair. Because if we did take it easy for the rest of the year here, then, you know, to restart your momentum at the beginning of the year, then it takes a little bit to really get going again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this is just my personal opinion. I think it's it's important uh, to push through the year, through the end of the year, and uh, continue, and to start that year off right. I, th in my opinion, you know, we wonder what what's the secret to success. Why are people successful? I think one of the biggest quote unquote secrets, and I don't think it's a secret, but is discipline. 
you have to be disciplined. If you're disciplined and along with that is focusing, right? If you're disciplined and focus, you're going to be successful. You're going to go at least going to have a big opportunity to become successful. Now, are there other things that play into that? Your limiting beliefs, your, your, uh, you know, your, your overall plan, your, the teams you surround yourself with certain, certainly, but I think discipline is first and foremost, you're not going to be successful. If you can't be disciplined, you can't stay focused. And, um, that comes with this time of the year, in my opinion, it's, it's really easy to get sidetracked, uh, and completely lose focus and let the year wind down. Oh, I didn't achieve my goals or whatever it might be, or I already achieved my goals. So I'm, I'm just going to kind of let this last month kind of roll, roll on. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause you know, consistency with that self-discipline is what's important. You know, it takes, um, a few weeks to really get into a new habit. And so if you start uh, being lazy right now, then you create a laziness habit uh, that's hard to get mm. out of. Yeah. Yeah. I I find it's very easy to get into this laziness habit and I've done it before where at the end of the year, things slow down. I slow down. I go, Hey, it's going to be just fine. No big deal. Which, you know, again, it it is okay. As long as you can be disciplined to get back up and, and roll on. But for me, I find that every time I do that, then the first week of January, I'm going, well, next week, I'm going to pick it back up. The second week of January, I'm going, well, next week, I'm going to pick it back up. Well, you know, there's no properties for sale right now. So I'll just wait until the end of January when they they start coming out. There's no properties for sale right now. I'll wait till um, after the uh, national uh, multifamily conference, you know, so it just, it can snowball and get to a point where you're really not pushing along one of the things now that I've tried to focus on because Matt, there's not, it, it, it is a truth. There is not as nearly as many properties for sale between Thanksgiving and the end of January. Um, and what, I think uh, what, I was just going to say, what can we do with our time then? Yeah. So, you know, I think a lot of sellers don't want to sell because it's, you know, it's, it's a busy time of the year and, and then you got winter and it's just a, it's a brown time of the year. And so a lot of people are, are waiting till uh, after the national multi-housing conference and um, potentially even longer than that and wait until spring, especially in the northern part of the uh, country where, you know, your landscaping doesn't look good or anything like that until, you know, May in Minnesota till July practically, but, uh, you know, so, so we wait, uh, to list those properties. So, so it's a slower time of the year, especially in the in December and January. Uh, so what do you do? Uh, that's a good question for me. It's really focusing on the business. It's really focusing on what, what are the things that we need to improve in our business to make sure that we're going to achieve success during the year when there are a ton of properties. I want, I don't want to be passing up on properties. If I've got properties that we can potentially put under contract and I, I didn't do what I was supposed to do during the downtime, well, then I'm not going to be able to close on anything, everything I want to. So we want to focus on really hammering at home and, and making sure we're, you know, strengthening our business, making sure we're setting our goals, um, making sure we're putting better systems in, in place, uh, just looking, really reflecting on what is right in our business and, and what needs to be, you know, tweaked or fixed or completely blown up and and then implementing that. I think this is a good time to catch up on phone calls as well. So make calls to brokers and other investors to really build uh, better relationships with them. I agree. Yeah. So great time of the year to, to um reconnect with, with, uh, especially, you know, investors and, and other people just reaching out to them. Uh, it doesn't have to be even, a, it's a great time where it doesn't have to be a business call. It can be wishing somebody a Merry Christmas or a happy new year or a uh, happy Thanksgiving or, or whatever it might be, or just saying, Hey, I've been thinking about you doing it during this, you know, season. Um, and you know, want to just reconnect with you. So I think, Certainly uh, reconnecting with people, uh, it can be a very valuable thing and, and can potentially spark, uh, you know, a 
relationship or a business relationship or a partnership or, you know, something, something like that, or worst case is just, you know, you're just being friendly. Um, not worst case. That's a great thing, uh, obviously to, to just to be friendly. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, I definitely agree. I, I think it's a great time to, um, to be able to focus on the little things in your business that maybe you don't focus on when you're super busy, when you are fighting for properties, when you are purchasing properties, when you're raising money, when you're doing all those things, if this is a, a seasonal downtime, it's actually a great thing to take advantage of. Yeah. Finding ways to increase efficiency. You know, that uh, book that we both love, uh, Think and Grow Rich, uh, you know, just an amazing book about how to plan and, and, you know, set yourself up for success uh, uh, with with business, with real estate, with life. And I, I remember you talking in your uh, in, in the past about how at Christmas time you would often spend a lot of time uh, with the bookkeeping because you didn't hire that out. So you were just always super busy with the year end bookkeeping, and that took you away from your family until you realized, you know, hey, that's one way you can increase your efficiency by delegating that out to a bookkeeper. Man, you bring up. Uh crazy memories dude it's, it's it's just wild to think that i would sit there at christmas and do be I'd literally be doing the books and so our family christmas and the only time i'd put it down is when we we're actually doing the thing but we're like at my in-laws house and everybody's hanging out everybody's having a fun time i'm sitting there on my computer slamming through as many pieces of paper as I could to get into my computer because I slacked all year because we we're so busy that I didn't put it in. I should have had a bookkeeper. It's just crazy to think of, of some of the things I did uh, when I first started the business. But, you know, that's just how it is. It, it was a grind. I mean, I was putting a ton of hours. Uh, I was grinding, but I was super determined. I was super disciplined. I was super focused. Uh, I just didn't put the teams and systems in place that I should have. Uh, until finally I realized, well, like, this is, this isn't just not going to work anymore. I can't keep doing this. I have to enjoy my family as well. I can't just have a family and not, not enjoy them. What's the, what's the point of that? Um, money only goes so far, right? Business only goes so far. If you, if you're building it all for yourself, that that's not going to work. Um, so finally realized that <laughs> and, and took a, took a little bit of a pause there, but yeah, that's super important to uh, really focus, uh, really think about your business, really think about uh, where you can improve, you know, get hiring a bookkeeper if you're d sitting there on Christmas doing the books <laughs> or, or days after Christmas doing the books and, and try, you know, or, or, you know, what, what other efficiencies are you lacking in your business? It's, it's so easy. So right now, one of the things, Matt, I'm trying to really work on is uh, just my, just my focus, overall focus during the day. And I'm probably a fairly focused person, fairly disciplined person compared to, I would say, the vast majority of people, but I still think I can always improve. Um, I'm a self-diagnosed ADHD, and I don't, I don't think there's any question that I, I am extreme ADHD. Um, so I have a very tough time focusing, and I have to really train my brain uh, to focus. So it's super easy for me to get distracted. Um, so I'm trying to learn strategies. I'm, I'm reading um on how to how to better focus my mind uh, throughout the day, what type of um, you know things I can do um, to make sure my my brain is you know staying where it needs to be staying uh, versus you know looking at the squirrels running around the the yard or whatever else is going on. I am serious. Like that's, I actually do that. Uh, we have a lot of squirrels <laughs> at our yard uh, that run around and I look outside the window and watch squirrels. Uh, so uh, they right now they're burying their, their nuts. <laughs> yes, I did say that. Uh, so yeah, I, I just, you know, but, but that's the, uh, that's where I'm looking at where am I lacking in my business? And one of the big things is that is I just, I feel like I can do a better job focusing. I feel like I can be, you could do a better job being disciplined uh, in my business. And then the other thing is I feel like I can bring on more people strategically to help me um, grow the business in certain aspects. So. Yep. I'm, I'm working on similar stuff too, of time management and, and focus. Um, I, I know I can, be more efficient and focused and, and uh, get more done. Yeah. One of the things that's really helped me and this is this, I, I implemented this a while ago uh, is with my scheduling. I used to have a to-do list. Uh, so I'd have a really long to-do list and I'd just check off items. 
uh, now instead of a to-do list, I actually have a calendar and that calendar is very focused, right? So at 8 a.m., this is what I'm doing at 8.45, I'm doing, I'm switching tasks and doing this at, you know, 9.45, I'm switching tasks and doing this and so on. And I have small breaks in there. And um, one of the things that I've started to do is in between, you know, I only work for, I only sit down in front of my desk or, you know, computer at, at one point in time, the, the very longest I'll sit down is one hour. Um, and because, because I can't, I can't sit there for two or three hours because my brain just goes blah. And so I get up, I go get a drink of water. I go do some pull-ups, some push-ups, some squats, whatever it might be. Uh, I do that in, in just, I do, I do some pull-ups or I'll do some sit-ups or, or I'll do some push-ups or I'll do some squats. Those are the, those are the four things I do throughout the day. And just to get my body moving again, and, and it helps clear my brain and it helps me focus on then the next task. And it might be the same task, but I just have to break that task down because I can't sit there for, I just can't, I physically can't sit there for two hours and stay focused. It's, it's impossible for me. So I realized that and I appreciate it. And now I just am working on all right, what do I have to do to make sure my brain stays focused that whole time? Cool. So awesome, man. Well, I don't know anything else you want to cover right, right now. No, I think that's about it. Just, uh, you know, keep going and end the year strongly. Yeah. end the year strong. I mean, bring, bring it home. Think about what you need to do in your business. Really? I think right now is a great time to really be thinking about what, what, have, what I have achieved. So yesterday, last night, Matt, you were on uh, with Trevor McGregor and myself and in our uh, mastermind group. And Trevor was talking about quite a few things. And we were talking a lot about goals and about discipline and about focus and about, you know, reasons why people fail to get to the next level. And, uh, and, and so, one of the things though that he talked about, and I, I agree, and I think it's easy to forget is we need to celebrate the wins of 2021. So this is a great time of the year to reflect and go, what, what do I, what am I really grateful for? What happened this year uh, with my family? What happened this year with my health, with my business that I can be really grateful for that we can celebrate and actually take some time to celebrate it, you know, to, talk to your, talk to your wife about it, you know, celebrate with your business partners, whatever it might be, but take some time to celebrate the wins of 2021. And then you want to focus on, you know, how, how do I want 2021 to finish? How do we finish it strong? And then how do we bring in 2022? What do we, what do we want to really achieve? And I think that was a great time to start thinking about that, start focusing on it. And you don't necessarily have to do it now. Cause it's, you know, we still have a couple of weeks left, but I think it's, it's a great time to start doing it within the next week or two. Uh, to really focus on what's worked in 2021, what hasn't worked, what do we need to change, and how do we really bring 2022 in strong and start the year out great. And one of the things I, I like to do is I like to have my, my year goal, but then I also want to have my first month goal. I want to have my first week goal, and I want to have my first quarter goal. I said those a little backwards, but that's my, again, my ADHD brain working. Um, but yeah, I want to I, I like to break it down because it's really easy. It's really easy to come up with your year, your annual goals. I feel like that's not that difficult. Uh, and, and your long-term goals, like I don't feel like that's that difficult, but to then get to a point where you can actually implement, because then we, we look at our year goals and we go, well, we got an entire year. You know, I want to buy 500 units this year. Okay. Well, I got an entire year. Like I, that could be one transaction. Like I could do that transaction. I could close the property Jan or December 31st and, and it's a one 500 unit building and I could achieve that. Well, but what are the steps that I need to take to get 500 units? Like, what are the steps? How, how do we, what do we need to do with raising money? What do we need to do with, you know, X, Y, and Z? I think that's really important. And then we, we can break that down into quarters, into months, into, into, into weeks and really understand how do we push off the year the right way instead of getting stuck in the mud. So, right. Cool. All right, man. Well, that's all I have. Um, get your goals set, 
end the year strong and, and let's crush it. Let's make 2022 an even better year than 2021. Um, it's for me, it's been a great year. I, I know for a lot of people, 2021 has been an amazing year and we're going to make 2022 even better. Sounds good. All right, Matt, you have a fantastic rest of the day. Make every day a Saturday. Thanks you as well. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it.